YouTube, welcome to the Emporium Outdoors. My name is Michael and today we have Esme with us. So we're out for a September camp and ride. It is grouse season so I do have my uh, my printing tool with me, so I rush I would say, and we're on the lookout for some uh, rough grouse or some perhaps spruce grouse we can see them. I actually saw one earlier, it wasn't quick enough so they are around but as you can see the foliage is very high so they're very difficult to uh, to get right now. Normally when the first snow comes down this all gets flattened and it's much easier. So for camping arrangements we have two hammocks. I've just finished altering my Hennessy Expedition A-SIM hammock which I may use tonight. I'd like to try that out but just in case it doesn't work out the way I expect. I have my war bonnet Eldorado hammock as well so we've got two options. Uh, it really comes down to whether the underquilt, which is the bottom part of the sleep system, whether it's going to fit on my Hennessy. I've never tried it, so I have both. Esme has on a new kind of chest thing, I don't know what you call that, harness. Uh, she's been getting quite a lot of uh, uh, like grasses and things uh, stuck in the front of her skin when we've been out. So I, I bought that best uh, so that she can have a little bit more protection. So if you'd like to come along and join us for today's trip, then you're more than welcome. Come on, let's go. So we just got lucky with this nice rough, rough grouse, uh, it's the first size and uh, yeah this will be great for our supper tonight. Hopefully we might be able to get another one but uh, Esme did a good job retrieving it and yeah first grouse of the season.
Bring it. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. That's another one for the pot. I think that's, that's good enough for today. I'd forgotten about the swamp. <sighs> well, even though we bypassed the bog, I'm still in a bog. Uh, it's not looking good. But we'll see if we can get down. So 
I think we made it out. I need to get Esme and she jumped in that bog and she sank right up to the top of her legs. I think that's funny, huh? Okay, so we have made it as far as the little river. I should be able to cross it, I think. It's pretty small. I think I should be able to get across here. But that's the bridge I've been crossing for quite a few years. And it's looking in pretty bad repair now, that's for sure. So hopefully I can just drive over this. It seems pretty solid. Should wash my boots off. Oh. Full of bog water. That was a bigger hole than I thought. Uh, so we're just taking a bit of a break. That was a tough journey. Hopefully you can hear me. The wind's pretty strong. But yeah, I couldn't film all of it. Uh, there was one part in particular where there was another bridge that was pretty stable, built out of large lumber pieces. It had completely come apart. And I had to put the, uh, the boards roughly where I thought they were. They were kind of floating and then just kind of go for it. There was no going back, nowhere to winch to. So that was a relief and we can't go back the same way. So there is kind of a T-junction up there. Um, I've 
traveled that way previously but I've never found a way out but obviously I need to get back to my truck somehow uh, it's probably a tomorrow Michael problem but uh, so at least the boots were holding up these are the morels that I picked up um, thank you for all the people that made recommendations but these have been working pretty good and I got them on sale so that's good my feet are nice and dry still even though I went through that bog had to stand in all that water I just want to get to camp now. So we have two chickens and we're going to have chicken stew for dinner. What do you think, Ez? <laughs> the end of the line for Esme and I for tonight. This is my, see the remnants of my previous fire I had maybe two years ago. I'd have to check the videos. I think that's when we did the uh, chicken cook. Maybe a year ago? I can't remember. Uh, but just over there we put in the hammock. But I'm pretty exhausted, I've got to be honest. So this is where I'm going to put my hammock and this is where my fire is going to go. I think I'm going to start with the fire first. So the reason I like this spot is because it's actually quite sheltered. It's kind of windy outside but just here is just perfect. Um, I do have some wood I left from last time. I'll probably have to go and get some more. But there's lots of stuff around too. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to sit for a minute, get my thoughts together, and I should have full cell service here too, remarkably. But, all right, let's uh, get a few things sorted out. That's me. Come. Come. Up, 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 up. Esme's jacket thing off now.
So this is one of the cheapest knives that I actually own. It's the cold steel Canadian belt knife. And I think these are less than $20. And uh, this is probably one of the sharpest knives that I own. And just with a uh, Falkneven DC4 and a leather strop on the back, I can bring this back to shaving sharp even after carving this spatula. You know, it's a little bit chunky. I'll continue to work on it, but I got to use it right now because the sun is going to go down in about an hour. And I got to get cooking.
So that should take probably, I want to say about half an hour to cook. Just simmer it away nicely. Uh, so it's pretty quick and easy. I'm really liking the cast iron pans. I was afraid they'll be too high maintenance, but actually they're pretty easy to deal with. But I'm glad that's all set up. I've probably got time now to start thinking about my hammock. Probably got about half an hour left. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I do need to make some uh, covers for the handles, which I haven't done yet, but I will. Uh, so Esme likes to eat the legs of the chickens. But yeah, I bought this pan set. It's uh, Lagostina. Uh, I bought it from a company called Canadian Tire, which is a Canadian company. It was on sale from $169 to $69. So, yeah, I'm very happy with it. It's got a skillet on one side, obviously, but it can make kind of a casserole dish as well, or a very deep pot on the other side. So. So this is my modified uh, Hennessy Expedition A-SIM. Uh, what I've done to it is I've taken it from being a bottom entry into a zip entry. And uh, I've made all the, the new straps, etc. So it's my first time testing it out. Uh, these are the tree straps that I made to start some webbing. So we'll try those. I also made the soft shackles as well hopefully you can see those these are really simple to make uh, but they work really well So I had to fuss with the setup a little bit there because I have whoopee slings but I also have the tarp strung across the whoopee slings using Prusix so they're actually grabbing onto the onto the whoopee slings which isn't great um, so I may have to change that but looks good uh, you can see now it has this zip I put this whole zip in uh, I put these long zipper pulls in as well uh, I always do this with my hammocks because when you're lighting your hammock, the last thing you want to do is try and reach far up to try and get the zipper to zip up. So I just put a long pull on to save yourself some, some stretching. Um, might need to come up a little bit. I'm not sure if it's going to rain, but it's pretty quick to set up. I'll show you some of the details. So this is the modifications that I've made. Um, I do have carabiners on here as well as the soft shackles. I don't need both. Um, I wasn't sure which one I was going to use this trip. My tree hangers are homemade. They're just uh, stitched. Uh, it's, I think it's two inch webbing. Yeah, I think it's two inch webbing. It has some like a 700 pound breaking strain. And then these whoopee slings. I think these are DD whoopee slings that I just used. And then you can see where I've got the the tarp and uh, just prussicked onto the onto the whoopee sling, which I'm not sure is a good idea. 
I do have the snake skin so it's easy to pack up. Obviously this is the uh, the top. Probably needs to be tightened up so we can do it. There we go, it's a little bit better. And then this is the zip that I put in. See I put this uh, webbing on there but to see the zip is separated so I can fix that. Okay. Didn't see that cheap zip. Yeah, so I just stitched it across. Um I should have left more space from the from the material to the zip. Uh, but I was thinking it would be a good idea to cover the zip, which wasn't a good idea. Should have thought that through. Uh, these are my zipper pulls. And this is just the, uh, the same stuff as the whoopee slings. And the zip goes all to the end. And it's put back the way it was from the factory. Get in the sand. Whoopie sling and then same thing. And what I'll do with the top is I'll probably just uh, string it on the back side. If there's no uh, rain or anything then I won't worry too much. Otherwise if there is rain I can just pull this side over and that should be good. Uh, I did leave in the original bottom entry and I may sew that up later on. The next thing I need to check is if my underquilt fits because that could be a problem if it doesn't fit. So my underquilt kind of fits. Um, it's not too bad. It's not as good a fit obviously as the war bonnet because uh, it is a war bonnet under quilt, a zero degree uh, under quilt. Love this thing. But I've just clipped it on with a small clip. And it seems pretty tight in the right places. And there is a bit of give in it. And it doesn't look like there's a lot of room between the layers. And it comes all the way to the other side. And I have my enlightened equipment. Uh, this is a, I believe it's a 20 degree quilt, so that should work very well. So that's my whole setup. That's where we're going to sleep tonight. Esme, what you doing? Just hanging out? But yeah, such a beautiful spot here. Starting to lose the light now. And I think it's probably stew time. Grab this one's ball. Oh, that's pretty good even though I say so myself. It's gonna be hot, as me. Perfect. Give you a piece of potato.
Mm. So good. Anyway, I'm going to eat my stew. And then I think we're going to stack up the fire. And I'm going to kick back for a little while. I think everything's done. This is such a quick camp to set up. I've got it down to a fine art now, especially with the the quick Hennessy hammock with the uh, snake skins. I had a few teething problems setting it up, but I think it's going to be fine. And then we'll pack up the truck, ready for tomorrow, get everything prepped, and we'll have coffee, etc. But looking forward to a nice night. Not sure if it's going to be cloudy or not, but. Uh, We'll see a little bit later on. Bon appétit. So the temperatures dropped down to about 11 degrees Celsius. And uh, time is, uh, it's just eight o'clock. But you can see my breath. But it's a very pleasant evening. It looks like it's gonna be a very starry night. And I'll try and get some, um, some shots of the stars if I can. Now the fire's doing well. I didn't build a huge fire because um, there's no need. Worked great for doing the cooking earlier. Have my Helicon Tex um, outdoorsman or bushman, I forget the names, uh, shirt on. Love this thing. It's one of my favorite pieces of gear. Um, at the moment, I've just, because it's a little bit colder, just turned up the collar, down up the uh, top button and has zips for pockets at the front so you can put your hands in. And uh, yeah, I've worn it all day. It's, uh, it's really nice, it's a thick kind of canvas, cotton, heavy cotton, and uh, lots of pockets, got a few things in there. But I find it's uh, cool when it's warm because it's kind of thick, kind of protects your skin. And then at night, it's actually not bad as well because obviously it's nice and thick has a little microclimate inside it almost and I love the color it's, like I say it's one of my favorite pieces of gear at the moment I'm actually wearing the trousers as well um, I normally wear the um, well actually I, I flip back and forth the uh, Fjall Raven um, trousers that I have uh, they're, they're okay I find the sizing I've actually grown rounder recently, so they're a little bit uh, tight. It'd be nice if they had an adjustment. These trousers um, have the knee pads, but they also have like a Velcro closure, which I'm not a big fan of, if I'm honest, because it's not as secure as like a button. Um, but it does mean I can just adjust them to however I feel during the day or whatever. Uh, but these have been doing really well. They're actually super comfortable. Uh, I wear my Under Armour uh, trousers as well occasionally uh, which have been fantastic they're my like lululemon yoga pants are so comfortable but these are actually really good i uh i find these very comfortable as well and they're a bit more rugged than the the um, under armor because it's like a fleece material and these are like a cotton i really like them yeah and you can put knee pads in too so yeah such a nice break just to get out. The bugs have gone. I'm really looking forward to climbing in the hammock. Uh, it's going to be great. I just can't wait. Got my podcast all lined up, so I've got everything set for this evening. So I'll probably check in with you before we climb in the in the hammock, which will probably be in about an hour, because I when I'm out I tend not to stay up past like nine o'clock really. Once it gets dark your body clock kicks in and it uh, tells you time for sleep but yeah we'll watch the fire burn down listen to my podcasts and we'll give you a shout back when I climb in the hammock so we're in the hammock uh, Esme's just here so we see there she is and uh, it's got a little bit cold. I think it's probably below 10 Celsius right now. So I'm hoping the under quilt's going to work. I've got my top quilt and also the swagman roll somewhere in here. 
Everything's on top of her, it's me. There it is. So keep her nice and warm. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to a very comfortable night. Stars are pretty amazing. Got some good shots earlier. So uh, yeah, just tough day. Yeah, that riding really took it out of me, I think. My shoulders ache. So hoping we can find a, a new route out tomorrow. So I just can't go through what I went through yesterday. That was pretty churned up. I mean, I could if I had to, but it's going to be pretty brutal. Um, once you make big ruts like that in the, uh, in the muskeg, there's no going back, really. So, anyway, looking forward to the morning. Okay. Good night for now. Well, good morning everyone. We had a pretty pleasant night. It wasn't cold. Um, this hammock is a little bit smaller than my war bonnet, uh, but it was comfortable. The underquilt actually worked pretty good. It was a very windy night. Still pretty windy at the moment. So there's a bit of flapping going around. I had to tie down the, uh, the other wing to the, the tarp. So I had to get up in the night. But we had a pretty good time. What do you think, Kez? Time's coming up to 8 o'clock and it's still a bit overcast. So we're going to climb out, start packing up here. I want to get an early start this morning so I can see if I can find that route back. But yeah, so it worked really well. Breakfast time and coffee. Oh, breakfast. Hungry. There we go, all done. Helping out took more than a couple of minutes and it's all packed up ready for use next time. Yeah, I found these uh, X-Brew filters, a bit of a pain in the butt. I saw Mark Young's video on putting sticks underneath, but I found if you actually push them into the cup, it holds it stable, but they're just not the best. Just let that drain off. Nothing better. This is still my Black Rifle coffee. Fortunately, they don't ship to Canada any longer. They stopped their distribution, which is a bit of a shame. But I think we're just a few minutes away now. Once I've drunk my coffee, we can get moving. It's starting to brighten up a little bit. I can see some blue now, so that's, that's pretty good.
So I think that's all packed up, ready to go. Time is, it's half past eight. So had a bit of a slow breakfast, uh, but now it's time to see if we can find that route back. Come on, up, up. So we found our way out of that terrible maze that we got caught in trying to find a different route back. It was a lot of backcountry gravel roads and not even that type of quality of road. But it took us an hour and a half of uh, riding between 60 and 70 kilometers an hour down these pretty bad roads. But we found a, a route across uh, to where we need to get to. So eventually I used Google Maps and I uh, managed to plot a, a route through that I, I would never have picked. Uh, but I'll just I'll put up a picture of what the uh, the roads layout is like out here, but it is just insane. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and the trip along with Esme and I. So until next time, take care. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.